Hello and welcome back to Soul Search Sunday with Johnny Tiger. Today's date is. Let me try that again. Today's date is Sunday, uh, March twenty sixth, twenty twenty three. Today I'm going to、uh, talk to you guys about an old Chinese idiom. I know, I know. That sounds like it's. Meant for Wisdom Wednesday,、uh, but I think this is actually quite so search worthy、uh, to be on a so search Sunday, and honestly, Wisdom Wednesday, so search Sunday,、uh, they are very similar. Both involve you looking out at the tree in my backyard, and me standing here trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, so this week, my father actually published、uh, an article on Facebook. Well, posted. He said published, but no, posted、uh, an article on Facebook. I think published does have a much more formal, official ring to it, don't you? So my father published an article on、uh, Facebook, and for. For once in my life, I actually read it, and because a lot of time I actually I'll admit this, I don't read his articles, and he doesn't watch my videos. I think、uh, it's just too much、uh, glitches between us in this、uh, father and son relationship for us to truly appreciate each other,、uh, what each other have to say most of the time. However, this time I did read read the article he posted, published, and I did、uh, end up getting、uh, quite a bit of、uh, inspiration from it. This are、uh, in this article he talked about the old idiom of "qian li ma" and "bo le."、Uh, "Qian li ma" and "bo le" is a very old Chinese、uh, story. "Qian li ma." Means a horse that can run a thousand miles. Now I'm pretty sure most horses, you, you know, given sufficient time, can run a thousand miles, right? But Qian Li Ma means the horse is so good, so strong, that this horse can run a thousand miles before it has to take a break.、Uh, Qian Li Ma is、uh, very rare. I don't know if they actually ever existed. Okay, but Uh, it's describing the、uh, alpha, the elite, the、uh, best of the best in horses, and、right? only the best horses could ever be called Qian Li Ma.、Uh, and in the old days, where、uh, horses were basically half of the battle,、uh, no, it doesn't matter how good a general, how good a warrior you were. If you didn't have a good horse, then you lost half of your effectiveness.、Uh, those who study medieval、uh, period of time and、uh, the knights and gentry and、uh, samurai and, and even in China,、uh, it was always like that. A good warrior is only as good as the horse he was riding. So this is to say that Qian Li Ma were extremely rare and very, very highly valued.、Uh, however, what even more rare and more important than Qian Li Ma was Bo Le. Well, what's a Bo Le? Bo Le is actually the name of a person. Uh, um, Bo Le in this story was a minister. For a Chinese emperor, long ago.、Uh, the story goes that the emperor was gearing up for war, so the emperor sent his minister out to、uh, get horses for the military.、Uh, and this guy's name was Bo Le.、Uh, we'll just call him Paul. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Bo Le is fine. Easy to say, right? B W O L E 伯乐，啊、uh, 
So Fuller went into the towns and cities, recruiting horses to the imperial army, and a lot of the horses were just not up to the job. He he turned down a lot of horses、uh, because the military wanted the best of the best, and suddenly Fuller turned around and he saw there was. A disheveled-looking horse, pulling a cart filled with salt and rock.、Uh, so it, it, it obviously the cart just came from the mines and it's being pulled by this very disheveled-looking horse. To everybody's surprise, Bolle went over to the horse and put his hand on the neck of the horse. And he had tears in his eyes. He said, "You have been mistreated and mislabeled. You are a chelima. You are the best. I'm so sorry that this have happened to you. I'm going to make you so famous, and I'm going to make you go、uh, get glory and be rewarded." And be used as a, only a chenima should be used. And further to everyone else's surprise, the horse, as if understanding what Waller was saying to him, looked back in his face, and the horse also had tears in his eyes, like almost like it's saying, "Finally, finally, someone realized that I am better than." Any anyone else thought I was. Finally, someone appreciate my value. Finally, someone understand me. So this is a short story that often used to describe、uh, people、uh, who have a lot of ability, a lot of worth, a lot of value, but are underappreciated because they haven't run into their bolle yet. This story has always hit me very hard personally, because this is, and I hate to turn this into too much of a PSI, but this has always been the case for the majority of disabled people. Yes, even in supposedly this democracy, this freedom,、uh, this great country we live in. Even in Canada, a lot of disabled people are so talented. They have skills and patience and dedication that cannot be matched in any other forms or shapes or by anyone else. Even those who are not disabled cannot match them in the field that they excel in. But they are turned away from jobs, opportunities. Some of them even turned away from volunteer opportunities. Like this is sad, right? You are disabled and you want to do something for the society. You don't even want to get paid. You just want to volunteer, and they tell you you can't do it because you're blind, or you're in a wheelchair, or because you can't talk, or because you can't hear. This is really sad, right? So. Almost for sure that among these disabled people, there are many chenima, many horses that can run a thousand mile, but they simply are not recognized because bolle have not appeared, and and the only way for them to ever、uh, get out of the rut, the poverty, the situation they're in. Is for that bolle to appear because without bolle, that horse would still be pulling the mine carts,、uh, loaded wagon till the day he died. He would never have be able to be recognized and achieve the glory that he did on the battlefield. Even my father, who very rarely compliments me,、uh, always tell me. You are that Chenima. You have so many things that you do extremely well, but the sad part is you have not come across your Bolle in your lifetime. I mean, just think about it. 
I am applying martial artists. Okay, just like I'm not alone. It's extremely rare, and but more so than that, I am a really, really, really good blind martial artist. That's even more rare. I am not going to stand here and say I'm the best, best, but I'm going to stand here and say without a trace of a shame that I am one of the best. Blind martial artist you'll find in this world, and yet this thing that I do so well, this trait that is so unique, have not been recognized by even my own government or my own workplace. I'm working for very little money. I'm teaching a lot of time for free. Honestly, if anyone. Were to recognize the value in how in what I do, or how rare it is to find someone who do what I do. This should be a no-brainer. Even some of my friends has pointed out that if someone who runs a martial arts school or an organization was to capitalize on what I can do, and this is a no-brainer. This is a promotional.、Uh, Cakewalk, like they, they, you, you should be able to promote this and get publicity for your school or organization just on this alone for a long time and make a lot of money. But so far, this has not happened.、Right. Um, so this is why, personally, the idea of、uh, the story of Chen Li Ma and Guo Le has always、uh, hit home for me because. I recognize as well that unless I ever run into my Bo Le, this Chen Li Ma will never get to truly run or truly do what I want to do or what I can do. Now, if that was the only thing mentioned in the article, probably. That wouldn't have inspired me to do this episode because I have heard the story of Chen Li Ma and Bo Le for so many years, ever since I was a child. It, it, it kind of lost its impact on me.、Uh, it, it's more like, yeah, okay, I I I know the story, I identify with it, and it, it's kind of a, a sore spot in my heart, and so I don't even want to pay attention to it.、Uh, however, what caught my attention was. In my father's article, there was an alternative story、uh, about Chen Li Ma and Bo Le, and it is actually that story I'm going to share with you guys today because it's a completely different take on the story, and yet it has a meaning behind it that it is quite possibly even more important than the classic story of Chen Li Ma and Bo Le. So the story goes that、uh, there is a Chen Li Ma,、uh, a horse, the best. He is the best. He can run faster and longer than any other horse、uh, in the kingdom. So one day,、uh, a merchant come to the Chen Li Ma and said, "Hey, Chen Li Ma, hey, best of the best horse, you are, you are so great. I am willing to pay your." Uh, pay a million gold to purchase you, but I, I know because you're so great. I'll need your consent.、Uh, will you work with me? I'll take you to places. You'll have the best food any horse has ever had. You have the best stable, best blanket, best saddle, best everything. Because I'm really rich. But all I need is a great horse like you. I need a Chen Li Ma in my life. And will you work with me? Will you come with me? And the Chen Li Ma said to the merchant, "No, I am not going to work with you, because you are just a merchant. Even though you are very rich, if I work with you, all that's going to happen is I'm going to get fat and lazy,、uh, and、I'll, my ability will never be truly tested. So no, I don't want to work with you." 
go away. And the merchant, feeling rejected, left. A few years later, a scholar come to talk to the horse. The scholar said, "Dear Chenlima, dear greatest horse in the world, I am willing to purchase you."、Uh, I am a great scholar. I am the best scholar. Everyone know. Ev- everyone admire my philosophy and my work. And I would love for you to follow me. And you and I will travel the world and see things that、uh, we haven't seen yet. And write books, play music,、uh, travel the mountains and the streams, and look at the waterfalls and rivers. Will you come with me? And the Chen Li Ma said, "No, I'm not going to go with you because even though everyone know about your philosophy, everyone read your book, you're just a scholar. If I go with you, then I'll spend most of my time walking, listening to your music, reading your poetry. That is not what I'm made to do. I am made for greater things. Go away." Rejected, the scholar left. A few more years later, a warrior came upon the Chenlima, and the warrior said, "Dear Chenlima, dear greatest horse in the world, I am the best warrior in this world. My swordsmanship cannot be equaled, and my archery." As next to none, I am destined to go on and conquer and do battle and earn glory. And all I need is a great horse. Will you come with me? The Chen Li Ma said, "No, I am not going to go with you because you all you are is a lowly warrior. You are." Oh, destined to go on and fight and die, or to forever listen and obey to someone else. I cannot serve someone like that. I know my worth. I am the only Chen Li Ma in the world. I deserve better. Go away. Dejected, the warrior went away. And the same story, same pattern, repeat again and again and again. Every few years, one of the greatest warrior, greatest scholar, one of the richest merchants,、uh, most respected minister would come to Chen Li Ma, and every one of them would turn away because none of them matched up to what the horse was worth. Spring came and spring went. Winter came and winter went. The sun rose and the sun set. And many moons have passed, and many years have gone by. And one day, the emperor himself sent Bo Le out to look for Chen Li Ma. Bo Le traveled through cities and towns, and finally he came to. The hometown of the best horse in the world, the Chen Li Ma. And Bo Le was interviewing and looking at all the other horses, but he didn't spare the Chen Li Ma even a glance. The Chen Li Ma was really angry, furious. He went to Bo Le head and nudged him with his head and like, "Hey, dude! Hey, yo, yo, over here!" What's wrong with you? Polo said, "What do you mean? What's wrong with me?" Chen Li Ma said, "I've been preparing for my whole life for you to come here because I know the emperor sent you. I know I'm the horse you're looking for. I'm the horse for the emperor. How come? How come you didn't even come see me? What's wrong with you?" And Polo said. Why do you think that you are the horse for the emperor? 
Jelly Monster, because I am the horse that can run a thousand miles. That's what you're looking for, right? Well, listen. All right. Go ahead. Prove it. Run. And Jelly Monster took off running. And to his surprise and disappointment and shock, after only 500 meters, he was huffing and puffing. His heart was beating fast. And his legs turned to jelly, and he dropped down onto the floor, and he couldn't run anymore. A very disappointed-looking bowler then walked up to the panting, sweating horse, and he said, "I'm sorry. You might have been a jelly man once, ten years ago, but you're old." A feeble, you have been waiting around doing nothing for ten years. You are no longer a chenima. This is why I didn't bother to come look at you. Yeah, quite a different outcome, isn't it, comparing to the first story? But this is such an impactful story, such an important lesson for us to keep in our mind, because sometimes. We turn people away. We turn opportunity away. I see young people today do that all the time. I went to school for four years. I'm better than this job. I shouldn't be washing dishes. I don't want to wash dishes. I don't want to collect garbage. I don't want to drive taxi. But if you just let time goes by, if you just let opportunity and people go by. One day you may be like that chilima, and suddenly wake up and feel, realize you are no longer young, you are no longer valuable. So while we're waiting for our bulla, it is very important for us to keep strong, stay sharp, and test ourselves, apply ourselves as much as we can. So when our bulla finally show up, we will be ready.